Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Spiritual Handyman, putting spiritual tools into the hands of the people that need them. I am Jason Antelek, your host, and today we are talking to Keith Leon S., the author of A Walk With My Angels, A True Story, and we're going to meet with him here in just a minute. But what I'd like to remind you guys is we are available on YouTube and now on Spotify. Yay! We're getting bigger. We're getting out there, folks. It's, it's very exciting. And either of those platforms or Instagram, uh, Facebook, if you so desire, please take the opportunity to join, like, subscribe, comment, and, and do all the cool stuff that helps the community grow because that is really what this is about. Share the episodes with people that you know will benefit get this information into the hands of the people that need it. And today, uh, very exciting, Keith Leon S. is joining us, like I said, and he is working with angels and he's gonna help us understand what happened in his story and also give us some pointers on how we could be in touch with our angels and what the benefits are of having them in our daily life. So uh, Keith, please take it away. <laughs> hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. So glad that you've agreed to be on the show, man. This is, I'm really jazzed. Angels is one of my favorite subjects. I was introduced to angels through angelic Reiki, and mm. it just sort of blew up. I, they started showing up all over, and what I did wasn't aware of is they were always there. They were always mm. there. Is, that, is yes. that true? Are they always around? Yeah, we all have at least one guardian angel, at least one guardian angel, and uh, they have two jobs. One love you unconditionally to get you to your predetermined expiration date. And that's the jobs that they do unless, because we have free will, unless we invite them to do anything else, right? And so they just, they're watching over us, protecting us, trying to just chill out. And then when you say, hey, I would love to see you, uh, show me the evidence that you're here, talk to me, like if you ask and invite that, then they're like, yay, <laughs> and then they get to work. And then uh, it's kind of like, uh, I like to say, like tuning in the old radio dial, you know, once you've done that ask and you're now starting to look, then you'll start to see all the ways that they show up for you every day and have uh, possibly been, just like you were saying, uh, your whole life. You know, that that aspect is so true. The, the first thing is you got to ask. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to allow and, and have that permission, right? And my, right. my personal experience with my guardian angel, which it took me a little time to come to that, but I, I started feeling this very strange like buzzing in the base of my right shoulder blade. And it mm. was way down in there. It, it was not up on the surface where I could scratch it. And <laughs> even if I, you know, get the back scratcher and tried to get to it, uh, the, the, the tingling wouldn't go away. And mm. then it started to synchronize with the sessions I was doing. And when I was doing healings and working with people one-on-one -on -one or when information was coming in, that would, that would happen. It would show up. And then when I started acknowledging it and, and really activating that in my life and saying, okay, I know that you're here. Well, what, what's the scoop? That's when I, I really started to connect and realize that it was a, a powerful force that was there to assist and protect me while I was doing my work. And, mm. and then through the knowledge of, uh, of another author, uh, there was a chapter in Christine Alexandria's book about guardian angels and I am flying home on the plane, reading the chapter about guardian angels, and it hit me. That's, that's who I'd been communicating with. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it changed my whole view. I was like, wow, I'm not, I'm not alone. This is a real thing. And I mean, how beautiful is that? So yeah, yeah. it's great to hear again that that's true and that everybody has, has a guardian angel. How, how can people get in touch with that? How, well, <laughs> what do you know that works? Well, like I could hear my guardian angel's voice since I was a child and this guardian angel kept me out of harm's way so many times. And then, uh, so from really young to about eight years old, and then my mom married this guy and he died five days after the wedding. And she looked at me and said, I need you to be the man of the house. And I took that on and I stopped being a child and I stopped listening to my angel and I, and I, slowly became someone who didn't believe in that and uh anymore and then uh, what i talk about in in the book walking with my angels 
a true story by Keith Leon, uh, is when th this, this guy comes to me in my early 20s at my job, and he's like dark and mysterious and totally cool, and he hardly says anything, but when he does, people like lean in and listen. And finally, I get to uh, ask him if he wants to hang out after work, and eventually he tells me that he is an earthbound angel, so an angel that's actually in the flesh that was assigned to me to take me from believing in nothing to believing in everything, so that then he would reveal my purpose in life to me and save my life, and then he would be gone. And so he, he showed me miracle after miracle after miracle to get me to believe in stuff. And so I don't want you to have to see miracles happen. I want you to be able to sit down and do what I teach is called sit, ask, and listen. So, so a lot of us are meditating, and then we're asking questions, and then we get up and go. And uh, some people don't even meditate. So they're just asking questions. but but the listening part is so important. So it's sit, ask, and listen, meaning listen for that answer. And, and you will get an answer when you're really focused on, on getting the answer and receiving that. So, so asking that question. And then even if you have to get up and go about your day, keep asking the question over and over and over again and watch as the answer comes to you. And so, uh, so that's one of the ways. And then uh, just a simple evocation, like I have one at the end of the book, an evocation that just says, like, if you've never done this before, do it now. And, and it tells you to ask, right? You could just say, hey, guardian angel, spirit, God, universe, whatever you want to call it. Like, it doesn't care what you call it as long as you call it, right? <laughs> so, so people call it intuition. Some people call it spirit, God. I call it angels. You call it angels. Uh, but, but to say, I would love to hear from you. I would love to see evidence of you. And just that simple evocation opens up everything. And now that you brought the focus, then it's going to start to show up for you everywhere you go. It does show up as people sometimes. Right? And, uh, and if you want evidence, uh, one thing I love to tell people to do just for fun, next time you're on a plane, Look at everybody in their eyes as they come onto the plane and say, are you an angel? Are you an angel? In your head, are you an angel? And don't be surprised if one or two of them doesn't wink at you and smile in a way that they, they heard what you said. And people go, really? There's angels on planes? I'm like, well, first of all, every person on the plane has at least one guardian angel. But the ones in the flesh, it's like they'll be on too because they're maybe assigned to a certain person, right? And they're with, they're following that person. So it's like, it's, it's like, how do you think that a, a metal tube gets from California to New York without incident? I mean, less incident than walking across the street, right? It's not because there isn't angels in that tube. <laughs> right? Man, you just, you just <laughs> launched a new hobby in my life. I, I travel quite a bit, and, and I, I have recently gone, well, I, why do I look at everybody? Why, why do I keep doing that? Uh, yeah. Now I have an actual purpose, so uh, I, I, I'm fully going to take advantage of that. Thank you for that clue, and, yeah. and I, I'm not going to be surprised. I can't wait for that first wink. How gratifying. And, yeah, and, and, but leave them alone because they get, you know, they're busy. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it, it's like when you recognize um, who the undercover cop is, right? You're not right. really supposed to say anything. You're just, just right. like, let the flight guy do his thing. Um, you just so, know, and then you smile at each other every time you go to the bathroom. You're just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know stuff. I know stuff. Yay. Yeah. So you, you hit on something really important that, that, I, that I think is something that we oftentimes kind of skip over is that a huge aspect of communication is listening. It's yeah. literally half of the equation. Yes. Yes. And, and we just, we skip that part. So I, I love that sit, ask, and listen. I, yeah. I, I think that you, I might have, I think I owe you a dollar. And that's, two, <laughs> that's, two, that's two new hobbies. So thank you for that. Uh, you got it. Well, <laughs> well I did the, the second book that I did called, Who Do You Think You Are? Discover the Purpose of Your Life literally changed my life i did the whole book that way i took what i thought i should do that day and threw it away and just asked who should i contact next and then i would wait for the answer one time i waited two days two days all i did was get up to eat and go to the bathroom and then sat down and just asked the question over and over again for two days but using that process said ask and listen it i just 
everything downloaded, like every for the whole project. And the difference was the first book I had sold next to nothing. Second book was international bestseller, front page of Amazon, right underneath Eckhart Tolle's book about life purpose, which is what my book was about, because I had a I had a joint venture launch all set up, and people I interviewed were from the secret 1.2 million emails went out so i already got right underneath his book but but oprah did the most beautiful thing for me two weeks before the book came out she held up eckhart Tolle's book and made it the topic of the world <laughs> and so so i was just right there and was i happy with number two yeah i was i was because it stayed there and stayed there because of that algorithm you know if you like that book you'll like this book they were recommending and free shipping Ten dollars more, free shipping. Boom! Add the cart. Add the cart. Add the cart. It was so amazing. <laughs> I will. I will take notoriety any way it shows up. Amen. <laughs> Abundance comes in many forms, and it, it doesn't. It, we use our basic construct to decide whether it's positive or negative, but it's really just abundance. Yes. Take it, yes. be grateful for it, because w w what you think isn't good for you right now is going to turn out to be very, very good in the end. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And everything you're grateful for, and the more you're grateful for it, the more you have to be grateful for. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So you, you wrote this book with, with some specifics in mind. And, and one of those things is that you have a belief that connecting with our angels can actually change our world. Would you, mm -hmm. would you share a little more about what that means? Yeah, well, when you're when you're tuning in and then you are seeing them and you're you're following your inner guidance, well, they're just going to lead you to anything and everything that you want, right? So they're here to help you, and so uh, so it's just that that fine tuning that connection and really listening. So like one of the things for people that call it first instinct, I say get a first instinct journal. And every question you have, write that question in the journal and then ask the question. And the first instinct that you get that is an answer, write it down in the journal. And from that point on, when the second instinct and the third and the fourth and the flip flop and the hundredth instinct come in, your charge is to say, hmm, I will only do the, what the first instinct was. No matter how many times I flop back and forth, I'm going to trust that my first instinct is always right because it always is, but only every time. And uh, when you stick to that, like that, that would change your whole world. That one tool, First Instinct Journal, could change everything. And that's just you tapping into your higher self, right? Your, your angels. And, uh, and so for those of you um, uh, who are watching this, you know, we have this flesh and we're made up of energy, right? And we're energy swirling around in it. And, at patterns and turns into this body so we're just pure energy just pure energy and then there's the energy that created us and the energy that we were before and we will be after and that's the energy that is everything in and as and through everything called god right and so if we believe that we are energy and that there is energy before we got here and that there's energy swirling around us then we know that we have access to that energy and that energy has the answer to every question before we even ask it. So all we need to do is tap into it. And then we have the answer to every question before we even ask it. That you, you said it and then reset it and then affirmed it that we're, we're really working with all of the same stuff. Yes. Right, right. Every, and, and what I'm hearing, and please correct me if, I, if I'm off base here, is that that our version of an angel or our higher self or God are essentially the same thing. Yes. Yes. And in some form or degree, they're really all the same thing, which would also say that, that we are too. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And that's my message. And that's what I'll, I'm going out for a year on tour. I'm going to be traveling the world. And my message is going to be, even when people are, uh, you know, you know, you're an angel or, uh, well, you're, you also are an angel, <laughs> just so you know, right? There's nothing. It's, it's, it's like Jesus said all day long. He was like the number one law of attraction prover first of all and then he said all day long it happens as you believe as you speak it is done unto you pray believing that you have and you will receive 
he all day long he was saying i'm not it i'm not it we're all it everything is it right we're yeah. tapped in we're tapped in you just have to sit ask and listen he just said <laughs> a million different ways right pray believing that you have and you will receive boom yes right so so i'm it you're it god's it energy is it it's all it it's just do we sit down and tap into it okay. do we sit down and okay. tap into it so so i i'm with you with you the human mind doubts and questions mm. so when you're sitting down and you're really trying to connect with that and you, and you traipse away right and, and you you reconvince yourself that it's not like that Mm -hmm. how, how, how do you get back? How, how, do we, how do we go from one to the other? And then how do we maintain being over here instead of over there? Right. First instinct journal. Because <laughs> you are going to get a first instinct. And if you write it down and you're committed to sticking to it, then that means that you're going to do that so many times. And then it's always going to happen the way you wrote it. And then that's going to pull you back. That's so, one, one way. So they, we're back to the same tool so that, that you're, what I'm hearing about that specific tool, the instinct journal is yeah. that, that it, it really is effective in kind of all aspects. Yeah. Yeah. The first instinct journal and then sitting and asking and listening and, and asking, asking your angels to show you proof and evidence that they are there. Right. And, and, and when you go out into your world, then then they're going to show up for you. They are going to show up. So if you're if, if you're in the world of disbelief, how do you get pulled back? Um, read this book. Uh, li listen to the teachings of Abraham. Go on video and the teachings of Abraham. Uh, she will help bring you back. Uh, just just start using the tools that are all around you. Um, go to uh, agapelive.com, watch Reverend Michael Beckwith on any Sunday. Uh, there, there are so many people who uh, can really, uh, you just keep watching these things and somebody's gonna say it the way that you need to hear it. So if it isn't me today, then it's Reverend Michael, then it's Abraham, then it's, then it's uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul book, then it's, you know, use those tools, find the tools and read it and, and do what they're saying and uh and and you'll get back you'll get back okay, so so leverage what you already have access to that it the, the the resources are really all around you it's just a matter of tapping into them yeah and really just just trusting your own intuition that's that's always gonna it's always gonna be right if it if it's the first one right right and, and you just so if you just tap in you just like say okay then i this is what I was told to do, I'm going to do this, and then it's going to work out. It's just that the doubting part that is the human part that wants to go flip-flop back and forth and, and doubt everything. Well, creating doubt then creates misfires, creates problems. Right. And then there's that, that tangible aspect, like you said, is, is you're asking for the communication, and then you have to be open to listen. You have to be aware. So yeah. can you can you share with us some ways that your guardian angel gives you feedback or shows up for you? Because you, you said you know if you if you're watching, they're they're going to show you signs. So what what are what are some ways that happens? Yeah, well, well, every time that you hear like you go left when you should have gone right, and and it's like you always go that way, but this time you were told to go that way or had an instinct, and you do, and then you find out there was an accident over there. That was that was angels. Mom lifts car off baby, right? You see these articles. Mom lifts car off baby. Angels. Uh, I fell over a cliff, and I talk about in the book. I fell over a cliff when I was really young, and and it was just like in the movies. Like I'm ah, I'm over the cliff, and this hand grabs me at the last second. And these guys like pull, they form like a human chain on this really slippery cliff that I fell off by the way. So there's no way they're supposed to be able to pull me back without coming off with me. But as they lifted me, I felt something underneath me pulling me back up. Right. And so, so it's as we go out into the world and we are being with a question, a stranger might walk up to you and give you the answer and walk away. <laughs> to the question that you asked previously that could happen uh, you could see you would hear a song and the lyrics of the song 
were exactly what you needed to hear. Or I love, I love when you drive by, uh, you're like on a highway or a freeway, and then you see a sign that says the answer to exactly what you had asked. That one is like, every time. <laughs> it's just like, whoa, somebody rented a sign, paid for that sign so that I could get the answer <laughs> to that question. So it shows up everywhere. And the reason I laugh about the sign is because it's literally a sign, right? <laughs> so how can you not believe in that? I gave you the sign, literally gave you the sign. Yeah, the, so, I, and it was fully tangible. It was yeah. right there. <laughs> right. And you, Proof. You know, hundreds of thousands of people literally drove by that and saw it too. And, and, yeah. and maybe some of them got the same message. I, I like it when you, when you pass by something that you've seen a hundred times and then all of a sudden it looks a little different than it did before. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's one of my favorites because that you know your awareness is shifting, it's amplifying, right? right? You're, right. you're becoming more in touch with what the communication looks like, and and the more that that happens, it gets exciting. It, yeah. it really is exciting to be uh, connected with that. And yeah. and you actually have a workshop designed to help people connect with their angels and their inner guides. Yeah, so what what is that about? Share share that with our viewers and listeners. Yeah, I'll be doing that across the country. This is the Walking With Your Angels live event. And so uh, so the thing that's so cool is I have all these tools. So I'll have music. I'll have processes. I have all these tools, tools available, available to me, all the things that I've learned over the years, and, I, and no plan. So in other words, uh, I show up in the room, and I feel into and check into what the room needs and sometimes that means literally asking right asking for feedback asking people to ask questions and because who am i to bring what i think they need to learn right that was one of the first things i got when i was like how will we design this workshop and they just gave me all these ideas and one was like no plan which is contrary by the way to everything i've done before i came out of the angel closet there was always a plan and slides and every word was rehearsed okay and now no plan i was like what are you kidding me right and so so i show up see what the room needs and serve the room serve the spirits that are in the room and so uh so that looks like a lot of things it looks like music it looks like process it looks like q a it looks like whatever is needed so so there literally will never be the same workshop twice if you followed me around like the Grateful Dead, you would never get the same thing twice. Uh, along the way, I'm doing a, uh, I'm interviewing people for a documentary that I'm doing. So you never know if, you know, you're at an event and Bob Proctor comes and we mic him up and because I'm filming him for, for the documentary that day. So there's gonna be surprises along the way, famous people that show up. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, and it's all built to connect you with your angels. And, uh, and so you can get real-time feedback on how to do that based on what's going on for you and with you. How cool is it to show up to work and have no idea what you're going to do that day? Yeah, it's interesting. We, we did, <laughs> did the first one in New York a couple of weeks ago and even sitting there at the very beginning, I was just like, okay, here we go. Here we go. And it was like the most profound thing most yep. profound thing and by the end it was like i was like i had like the whole room circling this woman and i took like prayer requests and i and i and i did like a what's called a prayer treatment right for a lot of people in the room and for this woman and like just healing happened and everybody was in tears and everybody was so connected by the end of this uh by this thing like nobody wanted to go home <laughs> we just sitting around looking at each other going like do we have to go home and it was just the most amazing thing and to just not have a plan was was uh was empowering well yeah you're present in the moment yeah right it, it, that's yeah. that's what i love about dogs they are just right there yeah, they're not looking forward. They're not looking back. They are right there in that moment with you. And and what a lesson. Uh, I, I am blessed with this cool little dog. Uh, my little chihuahua on stilts. His name is Goob. And his his primary purpose on this planet is to remind us that this place is supposed to be fun. Because that's what he does all the time. He does exactly what he wants whenever he wants. And, and just plays and has a blast and loves his people. And Every day I'm thankful for, for that message. And, and when I've taken that into other aspects of my life, 
and been in the moment, I, I've had the results that you're talking about. I go into sessions with people uh, going, okay, what are, what are we going to do today? Right? What, what does this mean today? And, and some of those are the most profound experiences that, that I have to draw on. And that's where the, the goal, that's where the new tools and the new pieces come through when, yeah. we're, when we're actually not looking at our agenda. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. I was like, I would go, what's next? And it was like forgiveness. And I go, really? Cause there's a process I do with that uh, for many years. And I'm like, really? And it's like, yes, forgiveness. So I'm like, okay, so here's what I got. How many of you have somebody that you've just, you've tried to forgive them forever. You've done everything you could and you just you haven't been able to dent it. You know, how many of you have that? Boom. How many of you like to forgive them right now? And it was like, whoa, hands went up. So I go, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> Did the process. It was, it was amazing. But I would have never thought, oh, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to give an angel workshop and we're going to do some forgiveness work. I just, that my, I wouldn't have put those two together if I planned it. Right. Right. But that's what I got in the moment. And that's what they needed. Like, like it was like 90% of the room was like, yes. And I was like, okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Dude, I, I am so inspired to just schedule workshops and show up now. Yeah. 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 I, 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 <laughs> I hope you're coming to Denver or someplace where I can come see you. That sounds like an absolute blast. I'd love to I see you be. in action. How, yeah. how do people find you? Yeah. How do yeah. they get in touch with you or find out your schedule or get your book? What, what, what does all the contact stuff look like? Yeah. Well, if you want to look at an event, uh, that'll be at beyond belief publishing.com and then just click events. Um, and then we also have support products there. So angel cards, you know, what it, a home study course, whatever you need to be able to open up to uh, walking with your angels. And, uh, and then I have a page for, for this book, uh, Walking with My Angels Book.com. So, Walking with My Angels Book.com. You go to that page and purchase from there instead of going straight to Amazon. You'll like click a button, you go off by the book. Well, you come back and you put in the order number, and then you get $1,620 worth of cool free stuff from famous people that were in the book and myself. So you get, you get $1,620 worth of stuff for just buying a book. So, uh, I'm gonna, and I'm going to keep that up for, for a while. Uh, we put that up for the launch, but I was just like, ah, I did so many interviews and people might not see this for four months. So I'm just going to keep that page active so you can, uh, so you can get those really fabulous. fabulous. Yeah. I will be sure to share those links in the description. I, uh, and for those people that are, uh, able to access that, that's perfect. If not, then uh, we are not saying just stop what you're doing, uh, especially if you're driving and get on your phone, uh, but, but definitely give a listen and, and get those, those websites punched in and check it out. Man, $1,620. If, if you have seen just beyond what Keith has already explained, like he's, you know, Oprah name came up, Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, he has been and shared the stage and talked to so many people. It, there is someone out there in, in Keith's world for everybody. So I, I can guarantee the value goes far beyond just the number that, that, that he shared with us. And Keith, thank you so much for what you're doing for the world and being so generous and kind and, and giving with, with the information and sharing it and getting that message out. It's been such a blessing to have you on the show. And, and you are truly passionate and, and highly energetic and enthusiastic. I, I, I really relate to that. So, yeah, so thanks yeah. for being that guy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you. And blessing was the word I was going to use, but you took it literally out of my mouth. So thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, my man. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the Spiritual Handyman community, uh, we appreciate the tools that you've shared. There, there's, there's some great, great pieces in there. The, the Instinct Journal, uh, I would have never come up with that on my own. That's, that's, a, that's a, great, a, a great share. So it's, it's a perfect start for folks. And uh, thank you to all of our viewers and listeners for being present 
and taking part in the community, please take an opportunity to like, share, subscribe, comment, get involved and spread the word. If you find other people that can benefit from the tools that are presented in our episodes, especially in this one, connecting with your angels, please be sure to share that with other people. That is all about what we're here to do, putting spiritual tools into the hands of people that need them here at the Spiritual Handyman Internet TV Show. Thanks for listening and for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. Take care. The Spiritual Handyman, bringing spiritual tools to the hands of the people who need them. Sponsored by the Eagle Heart Foundation. The Eagle Heart Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that brings charitable contributions and educational enhancements to the people. So how can you be a part of the Spiritual Handyman and the Eagle Heart Foundation? The Triple Win Situation. This book was written by Granddaughter Crow, and half of the proceeds go to the Eagle Heart Foundation, which in turn sponsors the Spiritual Handyman. How to get it one? It's on Amazon and Kindle for only $9.99. So we are here to bring tools to you. Uh, thank you so much, Spiritual Handyman. We believe in what you do.